I've put a picture there or a, <laughs> one of the first skin to skin moment with my son just to uh, boost a little bit the oxytocin in this virtual room. Uh, <laughs> so I want to say that um, I'm here because of pregnancy. And I'm here because pregnancy made me realize I had all the rights to be a creator. And I think it's important for me to let you know a little bit of the background and how I came to think about an interdisciplinary platform uh, like oxytocin. Um, because of pregnancy, I've started um, and my newfound um, sense of identity and a real burst of creativity during this time I found myself asking questions about the narratives that um, were shared with me until that point around pregnancy. Um, and I was, I'm thankful for having been um, displaced from my country of origins. I'm from the south of Italy into a new place. And that kind of um, almost empty space, because when I arrived in the UK, I didn't know anybody. It allowed me to create my own narratives around the experience that I was in. Um, but I've also realized how the visual narratives and the, the, the information around this time and this state were deeply um, negative. Uh, and they were not reflecting how I was really feeling at the time. And so I've started the only way that I had to make sense of what was happening for me was starting to look for a community and start talking with other people. Um, and that's how Procreate, Procreate Project started. And from this burst of creativity and the shared experiences with other, other, other people and other artists, that little baby in a light bulb came about. Um, and that's how I started connecting um, more in practical terms, my experience, the experience of other people and um, starting putting them together into different containers that could provide a different representation for, um, for the experience of pregnancy at the time. And then I gave birth. I gave birth to um, to my son nine years ago. And the experience of birth, despite not being the most ideal one, it, it really opened up a gate for me. It really made me, uh, it pushed me to look into my priorities. It, look, it pushed me to... Um, look into how I could really be into this world and relate to people and context from a more authentic place outside of the cultural um, script that I was imposed um, for a lot of time uh, until that point. So I became curious about how this experience of birth, despite not being so um, positive, so ideal for me, and despite that being such um, a gate opener for a new found awareness um, and a new identity, how could be profoundly impactful um, and how could that experience be... Um, be key to how artists, the artists that I was talking to at that time, uh, to relate and to approach to their art and to um, enter into this new experience, to enter mothering, the mothering experience, if that experience of birth wasn't so traumatic. Um, so I've, I've, I've just started investigating into the, the potential for birth to be a gate opener and to be 
um, a positively um, impactful experience into someone's life and specifically into the artist's lives, uh, the artists that I was talking to. Um, and so from pregnancy, I started talking about birth. I became a birth doula. Um, and, um, and I thought about hearing about a lot of uh, stories that had to do with trauma, especially uh, with the first births, how creating a bridge and a conversation between the different people and practices um, that take care about people during this crucial time in their lives could be a vehicle for new understandings and shared knowledge. Uh, and so that's how oxytocin came about in 2017. And we started from oxytocin birthing the world. And the focus there was really about giving space to different choices, representations of pregnancy, of birth, and uh, the postnatal period, uh, creating a, a container where a lot of practices could come together uh, and being in a space where um, different manifestations uh, from this experience could be shared and could be witnessed. Um, we were at the Royal College of Art. And then going for further, um, I realized and we talked, uh, we talked a lot about the biases that exist within um, the different systems that provide care. So we started looking into language, into LGBT plus rights, into reproduction politics. We started looking into race and disability. And so oxytocin mothering the world back in 2019 at King's College and this year between Middlesex University and the Science Gallery really wanted to create a space as well for all those experiences and all those concerns and hopes that we have for a better experience of birth for all the marginalized communities and all the stories that um, are still not uh, heard enough. So, um, after three editions of Oxytocin, I'm more and more convinced that art can be a powerful tool for learning and communication outside of what it's often a greatly pressurized birth space and work environment um, within a hospital institutions and beyond those spaces. Um, a lot of times the people giving birth including um, the 34 performance artists that have contributed to the three editions of Oxytocin in the past years, weren't in the, in the position to communicate what was happening for them when they were in the birth room. It takes time, it takes processing. And in this case, art, to understand that for themselves and to communicate that to other people. So the element of the live art that I've decided to integrate within the context of um, oxytocin, the oxytocin platform, it's there because it brings the lived experiences at the center. It brings an element of ritual and healing practices that can be collectively shared and witnessed. So many of the performances that we have seen during the last um, three editions brought also, and especially in the last one this year, brought also with them all the voices and experience of other people, integrating them in, piece, in their piece of art, amplifying in that way the urge for services and systems providing care to listen. Uh, so these are some images of the work that I've contributed to the different programs. And what it has been incredible, it's that bringing these stories, these voices, this different manifestation of pain, joy, and birth 
it's, it's really brought people closer. Sometimes, or a lot of times, it takes the lived experience to, uh, uh, or to live witnessing those experiences to get closer to a subject matter and to really get interested and engaged. And I think that, um, I'm sure Laura will confirm, the success of this platform is to really bring together different voices and bring a new platform where learning is not just on a script. Learning doesn't come from books, which uh, have been also created with certain bias within that, within words. Um, the words that are used, um, the statistics that we use, the data that we collect, it brings together a new way to really reconnect to the human experience, reconnect to each other, and create a possibility for change, for some, for a shift that starts from the inside from the individual and then a change that is brought into the collective through everyone's lives and work as carers. This was one of the works that we have experienced this year. And it was talking about Rubian's experience of giving birth as a, a black woman migrant um, in this country. And he brought together a lot of other testimonials. And together with this works, art and this interdisciplinary platform have the power to also shift the visual narratives and the representations in media that we have of this experience. Um, or that's the hope. Within this platform, we've also decided to integrate a um, practical workshop like the Maternal Journal, uh, which Laura will be talking about um, after, after me. Um, design making, art manifestos, poetry, and that brought within this context the opportunity, not just for the artist, to share and to use art as um, a tool for healing and processing and, uh, and for uh, voicing messages, but for all. To experience the power of, of interdisciplinarity as a tool for um, collective healing and care. And thank you.